following is a special BIS update on the NEMA Hurricane Dorian press conference and the plea for evacuations and preparation by the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert A. Minnis, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Good afternoon, Bahamas. Yes, we are here at the Paul Fackerson Center for the NEMA press conference tracking Hurricane Dorian. We have here with us Jeffrey Simmons, Acting Director of Meteorology, who will show us the path of the hurricane. Captain Stephen Russell, Director of NEMA, who will speak to NEMA's level of readiness. And the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert A. Minnis, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, who will give the country the final appeal for the areas projected in the path of Hurricane Dorian. Captain Russell. Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, again, members of the cabinet, ladies and gentlemen, secretary of the cabinet, members of the media, a good afternoon. Again, we are assembled here this afternoon for this press conference based on the approach of Hurricane Doreen, a category system which is now in, uh, making a, a track almost parallel to the eastern coast of the Bahamas between the islands of the Southern and the Central Bahamas. As hurricane, the hurricane approaches the islands of the Northwest, it is anticipated to make a turn to the West and take it across the islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama. As the hurricane crosses these islands, it is projected to reach category four with winds in excess of 140 miles and slow to a speed of almost six miles per hour. This hurricane will produce catastrophic results. Therefore, we are urging all residents in the islands of Abaco, Grand Bahama, to rush to completion the hurricane preparedness plans, which will aim to save lives, minimize injuries, protect livelihood, and minimize the losses and damages to properties and other assets. As a result of the possible impact of the hurricane, plans and motion to evacuate persons from the various vulnerable areas, such as the Keys in North Abaco and the areas of West and Eastern Grand Bahama, which are at risk for storm surge and severe flooding. This hurricane is anticipated to pro provide storm surge in excess of 15 feet. You can imagine the Keys of the Abacos, Northern Abacos, haven't experienced tidal surge to the order of 15 feet. That can, like I mentioned, produce catastrophic results. Again, we are urging all residents in the islands mentioned to take this hurricane very seriously and cooperate and support your local disaster managers on your respective islands and their teams and help your neighbors as necessary. The National Emergency Management Agency here based in Nassau, the headquarters at Gladstone Road, we have been in contact with all of our family island ad administrators, and particularly those districts in Grand Bahama and Abaco over the past 48 hours. They have been in their meetings, finalizing their plans for the evacuation and safeguarding property, and organizing their plans of action to safeguard their lives and to minimize injuries. Again, we are making an appeal to all persons to adhere to the warnings given. The disaster mechanism, the government's mechanism, is on standby, ready to respond. We have we tested our response capabilities in the past few months, and we're standing by to respond. Our regional partners are on standby, as well as the international partners are on standby to assist us based on requests. Again, we're making the appeal to all persons in the area likely to be impacted to find ways and means to safeguard themselves, their assets, and other property. Again, Prime Minister, sir, to make that final appeal to us to the nation, please. Oh, Simmons, please? Okay. Okay, please. Good afternoon, Most Honorable Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. At 6 o'clock this morning, the Department of Meteorology issued a hurricane watch for the entire Northwest Bahamas, which includes particularly Abaco, Grand Bahama, 
um, North Eleuthera, Bimini, Berry Islands, and North Andres, and New Providence. At, at 11 o'clock today, this morning, um, Hurricane Doreen was situated some 300 miles to the east of San Salvador. And for the past few days, for the past day, it had been moving parallel to the, to the islands of the Bahamas. However, on, on, on um, tonight, Dorian is expected to take, and tomorrow particularly, Dorian is expected to, to take a turn more toward the west. That turn would take Dorian toward the islands of the northern Bahamas, particularly Abaco and Grand Bahama, then on to Bimini before moving into the, onto the Florida Peninsula. What we have um, projected on the screen, we have a, a, a model that was put, uh, that was a consensus actually taken from many models, that hurricane models that are run on a regular basis, that we use as a guideline to assist us in, 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 in formulating the tracks of the hurricane. That tra the track that now, the more, the the consensus more track right now showing uh, Doreen moving in to Abaco, beginning to affect, um, as you can see, the, it's moving. And right now at this particular time, which would be at 4 a.m. on Sunday morning, Marsh Harbor area in, in Abaco, central Abaco, would begin to feel uh, tropical storm force winds as Doreen continue moving toward the west. And then by 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, East End Grand Bahama will begin to feel those same storm winds. At that same time, Marsha Abaco is expected to be experiencing some strong tropical storm force winds heading into, and, and in the next hour, that's around one, sorry, around 2 p.m. on Sunday evening, we expect hurricane force winds. At that time, Dorian is expected to be a category four hurricane with sustained winds of about 130 miles per hour. It is anticipated that the center of, of Dorian will move onshore in Marsh Harbor at about 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon and continue moving toward the west. At about 11 p.m. Sunday night, it is anticipated that the center of Dorian will then move into East End Grand Bahama and continue moving westward along Grand Bahama throughout Sunday night into Monday morning. Like I mentioned before, this is, this, at this time, this is expected to be a Category 4 hurricane. Now as it moves toward West End at about 11 a.m. Monday morning, the set of Dorian, Dorian is expected to be at 140 miles per hour an even stronger category for hurricane. This system is expected to be accompanied by storm surges of up to 15 feet. In addition to these storm surge, at this time we are also experiencing spring tide, which create another issue, which caused storm surge now to be elevated an additional feet or additional foot or two feet. It's expected that Dorian will continue moving toward the west on Monday and out of the, and out of the, and into the Bimini on Monday morning, the center that is, and then move into the Florida Peninsula sometime on Monday evening, clearing the Bahamas by Sunday, by, sorry, that would be Monday afternoon. We're asking residents, particularly those in Abaco, Grand Bahama, Bimini and the Berry Islands to make preparation for this storm. For this is expected, like we said, to be a major hurricane, category four hurricane. It rains from anywhere from 130 up to 140 miles per hour. Thank you. Thank you very much. My parliamentary colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Bahamians everywhere, good afternoon. Dorian is moving slowly, which adds to the danger of this very powerful storm. 
A hurricane watch is now in effect for the islands of the Northwest Bahamas, including Abaco, Grand Bahama, Bimini, the Berry Islands, North Eleuthera, North Andres, and New Providence. Hurricane Dorian is expected to cross Abaco and the Abaco Keys and is also expected to impact most of Grand Bahama. The hurricane will begin to impact Abaco and Grand Bahama on Saturday into Sunday. Let me again emphasize that because of the wind speed, rain, and expected storm surge mixed with the spring tide, this is a very powerful and extremely dangerous hurricane. A storm surge of 12 to 15 feet is expected and may be exacerbated by the current spring tide. Flooding poses a great risk to people, property, and animals. New Providence, Bimini, and Berry Islands are expected to experience tropical storm winds. Let me emphasize to the residents of New Providence that they should begin hurricane preparations because the island is under a hurricane watch and because hurricanes are unpredictable and can shift. Because of the danger posed by Hurricane Dorian, we must act quickly to protect lives, with particular emphasis on the residents of the Northwest Bahamas who are at the greatest risk. Last evening, the Cabinet met with officials from the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and other related agencies to map out the, forward, the way forward with primary focus on protecting and saving lives. And after consultation with my cabinet colleagues and with NEMA and the Met Department, the government has decided to institute an emergency evacuation for residents from the northern keys of Abaco to mainland Abaco. We are also urging residents from West End, East End, Sweetings Key, and Waters Key to move to the interior of Grand Bahama as quickly as possible. For those residents of Grand Bahama and Abaco who wish to leave these islands, flights are being increased. I am appealing to residents who are able to do so financially to seek shelter among family members and other suitable accommodations for their safety. As I speak, the emergency evacuations are being conducted. We are currently evacuating residents from Grand Key who are who we know are moving to South Abaco via boats and aircraft. And here is a list of the hurricane evacuation, evacuation orders. Sweden Key, you are to evacuate. Waters Key, you too are to evacuate. Gold Rock Key, Gold, Gold Rock Key North and South, evacuate. Freetown, you are to evacuate. Pelican Point, you are urged to evacuate. Rocky Creek, you too are urged to evacuate. McLeanstown, Grand Key, Deepwater Key, Queens Cove are all encouraged to evacuate. Gambier Point, Bevanstown, High Rock, Smithstown, Matthewtown, Mathertown are to be on alert and are to move inland. In West Grand Bahama, the settlements of West End, Poodle Bay, and Bahama Beach 
are urged to evacuate. Deadman's Reef, Holmes Rock, Sea Grape, Jonestown, Russelltown, Martintown, Pinedale, and Hannah Hill are urged to move inland. Let me be extremely clear. Those who refuse to evacuate place themselves in great danger from this very, very powerful and potentially life-threatening hurricane, which will bring dangerously strong and high wind surge, which is one of the greatest threats from a hurricane. Emergency personnel and assistance will be unavailable during the immediate impact of the hurricane for those in the projected path who do not evacuate. Let me again make the strongest plea possible to the residents of North and Central Abaco and East End Grand Bahama to evacuate their respective areas. Do not put your life and those of your loved ones at unnecessary risk. I urge you, do not be foolish and try to brave out this hurricane. The price you may pay for not evacuating is your life or serious physical harm. During Hurricane Matthew in 2016, there were some, particularly in southern New Providence, who refused to relocate and evacuate their residences. Emergency personnel risked their lives to rescue a number of residents and take them to shelter. Those who are evacuating should secure and bring identification with them, including passports, NIB cards, and other forms of identification, as well as medication, clothing, and toiletries adequate for several days. For those who are relocating to hurricane shelters, NEMA has the list posted on various social media and the government's website. The broadcast stations have been announcing the list, which can also be found in the newspapers. Specific announcements will also be made as to where the shelters are located and at what time they will open. Hurricane shelters will be adequately staffed by various personnel and will be secured by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. The evacuations are part of the government's disaster mitigation response and recovery plan. We are working to ensure that the evacuations are completed as efficiently and as orderly as possible, given the instances at hand, the circumstances at hand, and the possibility of the hurricane taking a different path than currently forecasted. All government offices throughout the country have been closed at noon today. The opening of government-operated schools in affected areas will be delayed and will open following assessment. We have confirmed that there are sufficient medical supplies available at the Rand Memorial Hospital in Grand Bahama. The Minister of Finance has been instructed to mobilize the $100 million line of credit from the Inter-American Development Bank, which we signed in April. This is a key component of the government's readiness plan so that we can have access to resources as quickly as possible to speed up response and recovery efforts. Again, I am appealing to Bahamians, residents, and visitors to take all necessary precautions to safeguard themselves and their property. 
I also appeal to Bahamian and residents to, un to only rely on reliable sources of information and to avoid questionable, unreliable, and fake information. I will continue to update the Bahamian people as time progress. May God continue to bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. The proceeding was a special BIS update on the NEMA Hurricane Dorian press conference and the plea for evacuations and preparation by the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert A. Minnis, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas.